Tesla continues to lead in the EV market, whether you like it or not. It's been great to see other automakers bringing their own models onto the scene, but even so, all electric brands have been able to continuously do better in this space than globally and historically established automakers. To me, this points to those automakers who are falling behind, who seemingly have the world at their fingertips, needing to make major moves to gain more of the market share. In the meantime, Tesla's recent approach of bringing down the starting cost of their EVs while still improving on the models is only helping them maintain their strength in the market. Our most recent news is that, that we, we really could not wait until tomorrow to deliver, we're all hopping on tonight, um, is that Tesla has somehow been able to drop the price on the Model Y even more. And I want to clarify, it's not just a price drop, it's a whole new model. So they already sell this car in Canada and Europe, and it's actually quite popular in Europe. And I'd say right now, we are not really sure what factory is building these. So let us know in the comments if you have any ideas. And we know that Canada has received some uh, models from the Giga Shanghai factory, and we'll talk a bit more about what we've seen out of the updates of the Model Ys there as well. And um, also to Europe, they we've seen some deliveries. We're not really sure about the Giga Berlin builds for the rear wheel drive Model Y, but we could be wrong. So let us know in the comments what you, what you know. Yeah, we want to iterate that. This is like breaking news. So we're learning things as we're kind of saying it. And uh, yeah, LFP was, you know, initially bigger in Europe and Asia. And um, I've heard also that Giga, you know, uh, Giga factory in Texas is even working on LFP stuff. So we don't know for sure, and sometimes the facts, the tax credit can actually uh, specify that it has to be more American-made things, anyways. So uh, it's a good way to put it. It's it's a new model for us, not just a price drop, but it's also not entirely new model. It's like new to us, like saying, "Oh, I, it's it's not new. It's just new to me." It's it's that phrase. But I will say, I, I wish I had a Model Y with LFP on a road trip. My first Model Y road trip was to the Albuquerque Balloon Festival, and. Um, <laughs> It would have been nice to be able to fully charge without worrying about it. Welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. I'm your host, Francie, and today I'm joined by our friends of the podcast, Jordan and Tulloch. Thanks for joining me to speak about this tonight. How are y'all doing? Great. I'm, I'm, Tulloch's really ready. He's inside a Model Y, so that's the, <laughs> that. that. <laughs> he chose the exact right setting. <laughs> I was just on my way home from work, ride sharing with my Model Y when the news broke, so let's go. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, so the Model Y is their best-selling EV. This is probably not news to a lot of people, and not just that, but like the best-selling electric vehicle by far. In 2022, they sold over 740,000 of them, which was a 91% increase from 2021 sales. And in August of this year, it was reported that they already sold over 420,000 already. So the most recent news, like I was saying, is that we can see here, if you're tuning in on YouTube, you can go to the Tesla site and see these new prices now. And for the Model Y, if you're under the probable savings where it factors in all those probable savings that you'll get from owning an EV from tax credits to saving on gas, the rear wheel drive uh, edition is $32,890. $32, the long range, $39,390. And the Model Y performance, $43,390. This is an incredible value for this EV. So y'all, how do you think a Tesla is able to do this yet again? Drop the price of the Model Y. Well, they keep improving the technology and I, I do wanna add an asterisk to those prices. Um, probable savings even takes into account your state. So my state shows different than, my probable savings cost shows different than Francie's. Um, in Colorado, mm -hmm. it's an added five grand below that, which is wild. It's showing Model Y with $27,000. Of course, that is assuming how much you drive, how much gas savings, all that. You, you, yeah, just switch to the purchase price to look at it, which is still really impressive. 43 grand for what is one of the best freaking SUVs out there, at least in the electrified market. Um, the, the technology is just continuing to progress and the prices are continuing to drop. On one hand, Tesla has not given us the quote unquote $25,000 car really that they've promised a long time ago. But on the other hand, inflation has continued to rise and their prices have continued to drop 
albeit they actually did hump a bit and then they dropped so it's kind of not linear exactly but uh it's it, it's intriguing and i'm glad to see this and uh, we have all sorts of technologies improving such as you know lfp chemistry and such that we uh that this appears to have so uh talik how's your how's your model y what's your impression on the the price bracket of this <laughs> Well, um, looking at the the one, basically the one I have, just the current version at fifty four ninety before savings, that's five hundred dollars more than I paid two and a half years ago. And you know, as we said, you just said we had the, the prices went up and came back down. It went up so much that I was tempted to sell my Y for about ten grand more than I paid for it, but I needed to keep my car. So these are definitely enticing prices and um the lfp is very enticing for me because even with the long range uh you know lithium ion that i have when i'm charging at 80 90 percent daily that's almost the same range as an lfp and a friend of mine has a model 3 lfp where he can charge it full and we basically have like the same range on a daily basis so yeah that's just, it's definitely that's tight not everyone yeah not everyone realizes that um the lfp chemistry specifically means it's happy to charge to 100 whereas the typical um batteries we've been used to uh, suggest 80 maybe 90 but you're right that that 80 percent off the long range does equal pretty close to the 100 percent of the, uh, the standard range so definitely things have changed since you got your Model Y Talik. So and pretty dramatically. But Jordan, can you tell us a bit about the specs of this Model Y, maybe compared to the Model 3, where we've seen, you know, a lot of change recently across the board? Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of data pointing to the fact that this is using essentially the same uh, components from the Model Y or Model 3 um, rear wheel drive LFP that we're familiar with, which is 58 kilowatt hour usable as far as we know, and then about 60, some sorts of say 62, not a big buffer as far as gross capacity. And then the single drive motor on the rear, it's about 200 kilowatts or 270 horsepower for those of you who want to calculate an American horsepower, and uh, around 300, a little over 300 pounds pound feet of torque. It's no slouch, um, but it's also obviously no performance Model Y, which is fine. Um, it's not a blazing zero to 60 either. A lot of people think, oh, electric car means zero to 60 in sub five seconds. Um, that's not the case here. It's it's 6.6 .6 seconds zero to 60, which is, it's kind of slow, um, but also for an SUV, if you compare it to a gas one, still quicker. So you still have that going for you, even if you go for this one. Um, and then the range, as they're stating, is 260. Uh, that's the EPA guess, which, as we know with Teslas, is maybe on the optimistic side. Feasible, but optimistic, whereas some of the other cars, you'll probably blow past the EPA. It just depends which brand you're talking about and how they do either the two or five cycle testing. And there's a lot of components that go into that. But uh, I'd say decent range, not not uh, attention grabbing by any means, but plenty for most people, especially when you calculate the infamous charging network you get along with this car. Yeah, especially with charging, um, if you're getting 170 peak, that's still better than most of the you know CCS vehicles out there right now, especially with you com com uh, compound that with the Tesla charging network. So you might not get as much range as a new Chevy Bolt, but you'll be able to charge it faster than a Chevy Bolt. Much faster. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. And this is um, actually, I was just saying, yeah, this is actually really intriguing news because I literally have a friend today call me. Hey, he lives in Nashville. He's like, hey, I'm trying to shop for a car. We're arguing over like Model 3, Model Y, Chevy Bolt. And they'd love the Model Y. It was just a bit expensive. And then this happened. So I was like, well, <laughs> yeah, there you Tesla's go. Going to keep including more people who are budget, you know, um, conscious, conscious, which a lot of people are. They like to go EV. Of course, there's those long term savings and people like to push for that. But still, it's it's an upfront cost. It's a huge, huge decision to buy a car. It's a big investment. A lot of people also are a little bit more on the fence. We'd like to shove them over sometimes, but it dropping the price is really a surefire way while while maintaining quality to get more people to switch over to ev and this isn't even the most um like there was also more recent news about the model y and we wanted to touch on that because this just happened uh the other day and you know with the 
Model 3 refresh that was uh, nicknamed or, or codenamed the Highland Project. Um, you might have heard of the counterpart project for the Model Y, which is the Juniper Project. And um, while that hasn't happened, I'll be clear, we have seen an upgraded, updated Model Y that has come out of the Gigafactory in Shanghai, China. So it has that same starting price, or maybe it's not the same anymore. It was around like $36,000. And that was all sourced from the Tesla's official WeChat account. And it has new features like the black 19-inch Gemini wheels, ambient lighting, changes to the dash where wood has gone to fabric. And we, we've seen those kind of uh, updates on the Model 3. It has the high performance, the long range all-wheel drive, and the rear wheel drive versions as well. So Tesla has been working on updating the Model Y, not a complete refresh yet, but uh, definitely updates that people can enjoy in the meantime. Maybe if they're waiting for the refresh, this will convince them to go ahead and go for the Model Y and now a price decrease. So definitely, we, we, won't, we haven't seen these updates in the US or North America yet. Uh, this was specifically in China, but we've seen these kind of updates roll out uh, in a similar way and then come to other countries. So perhaps we'll see that along with the price decrease. What do y'all think about that? All this Model Y news. Yeah, I, th I think it's important for people to understand um, there's a lot of news happening right now and it, it, you have to look at the market you're in, honestly, um, unless you're just a nerd like us and want to see what every single market's doing. Um, I'm a bit jealous by the Chinese Model Y. Of course, that's getting certain features that you mentioned, the interior updates that we've been waiting for for a while. I'd, I'm fine with the Model Y and Model 3 interior. I've lived with both of them plenty, done a lot of car camping in Model Y. I mean, it's such a capable vehicle as is. Um, but of course, everyone loves seeing little improvements here and there. A lot of people equate Tesla's to like the iPhone where every year it's like a uh, little bit of an upgrade, not a huge deal, but it's still an upgrade. And on the one hand, you know, why don't fix it if it ain't broke? Um, so I, I'm a little jealous of those and same with, you know, the fact that it seems like overseas is getting Highland Model 3 first. Uh, really curious to see what the Juniper Model Y will be, especially if slash once we get it in the States. Um, maybe I'll get one. License plate, gin. You know, Juniper is the key ingredient in gin for those nerds out there. I do know <laughs> that. That is my favorite <laughs> libation choice is gin. And I love that it is made from the Juniper plant. Um, I yeah, wish so I made, <laughs> sorry, I wish I made it home so I couldn't be enjoying a beverage like Jordan right now. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> yeah. We just had to hop on and cover this. And yeah. while we don't know all the answers for how Tesla is able to bring this price down, we can speculate that perhaps it's a change in the battery chemistry to the LFP as, as we as we have seen and some other ways that Tesla has proven that they're able to cut the costs. And doing this on the most popular EV for them and in general is definitely I mean, we're only going to see sales go up from here, right? I mean, even I was looking earlier earlier at this same website and I just happened to miss this info. Um, but yeah, do y'all have anything to add before we sign off for our viewers before they check it out? Yeah, Talek? Well, speaking to where my, as a, as a current Model Y driver, so I have one that's about a year into production from 20, April of 21. And if you saw my 100 mile, thousand mile video, you know, you kind of have an idea of where my battery's at. And I, I'm wanting to upgrade, but so, if, so basically I look at it as if if I was in China and being a, a brand new Tesla buyer, I would love to get the one with the, the incremental upgrade with the, the ambient lighting, but it's not a completely new refresh yet. But me as an existing, uh, you know, even though I have the, uh, the console, I'm, I would want the Juniper full refresh. So I think it depends, like, like Jordan said, it depends on which market you're in. And I think that includes like what you're coming from. If you're jumping in as a first time Tesla buyer, that incremental Model Y is a first Model Y would be great. But if you have one already, you might be like, you know, I'll wait for the next iPhone, like you said. It's really hard to gauge that sometimes because especially with something as volatile as Tesla can be, where, okay, do I buy the one that's available right now or do I wait for the more improvements coming to the next one? But at that time, the price could go up, the tax credits could change. There's a lot of variables. And especially for people who are, like relying on the tax credits, the only way to truly rely on them is to like buy something now because they can just change and fluctuate so much. 
and uh, and some of those depend on you know where things are manufactured, which that could change. There's so many things that can change. So it is kind of like, well, if you need one or want one now, uh, maybe get it. But if you can wait, like if you're in talks uh, place where you're like, I have a Model Y, it works fine. It's got some miles, it's got some wear and tear, but it still just works. And I, I've seen how Kyle's Model 3 has worn. That thing has been through hell and back and it still works. So I'm not too concerned about the reliability like some people might be. I think they're pretty proven at this point. So I don't know. I, I would love to wait also for the Juniper just because I think it'd be cool to get the newest thing. I, I am that person who wants the new iPhone every year because it looks, well, basically the same, but a little bit different. And that's <laughs> kind of what Juniper and what Highland has done. It's, yeah. it's just a little bit of a change, but enough that I think is, is, is valuable. I'm definitely tempted by this new lower price option as an interim vehicle for me because, because of how many miles I put on my vehicle, I like to be in my battery warranty. And so I'm, I'm kind of actually looking at this lower price option where I can charge it to 100 every day and have that be my tide over model until the full refresh comes out so it it also depends how many miles you put in your car too yeah i know tesla's trying to trying to meet their goal of delivering 1.8 million units this year um and that could be a factor in why they're lowering price or trying to get people in the door they they can lower prices i mean that's that's how they can stay competitive in this market of increasing i mean let's face it everyone has a cuv or six available in the in this time frame and there's now there's electric ones from almost every company uh, except you know Honda is a little bit behind. A few few companies are behind, but um, they're they're trying to capitalize on as much market as possible. Model Y is already pretty much the best selling vehicle uh, around, and uh, they're just trying to basically Tesla's eating into their own margins at this point. But it's still a margin that's still profitable. Yeah, they are really taking a lot of me measures to incentivize uh, folks buying the Model Y from or just purchasing the Tesla in general like from saying you need to buy before the end of the month or your FSD will not switch over to price cuts to improvement. Um, it's really an incredible, incredibly successful approach that they're taking and um, pretty impressive. And um, yeah, uh, out of spec, Dave just ordered uh, a Model X. So I wonder how he's feeling now. Um, and then yeah, Talek, you're sitting in your Model Y. So thanks also for tuning in. You are charge positive as well, which is also where you can find Talek. Jordan is, of course, a friend of out of spec. And where else can they find you, Jordan? Yeah, I think it's uh, Jordan Schiefer on Twitter. I think that's my handle. I don't remember, but yeah, <laughs> I'm there. I'm I'm tweeting. You know, there's various tweets of me and Kyle back and forth. So you'll you'll find me somewhere. But yeah, I'll I'll be in out of spec reviews and various uh, things up around the out of spec empire. So subscribe everywhere i guess <laughs> we need a luxury yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly subscribe everywhere comment below we'd love to hear what you think about this approach from tesla and more and thanks for tuning into the out of spec podcast we will catch you next time bye y'all